done a start to finish carrot video ever, so we're going to do that today. And I'm going to tell you some of my tips for drying carrots longer. But I always get whole carrots and not those baby small carrots, which are soaked in chlorine. And you never know if they're going to feel all soggy and slimy when you get them out of the package or if they're going to be gray and dry. So I get whole carrots and I wash them and then normally I store them in sticks which I put into the refrigerator. We will show you all these different processes as we go, but carrots will say snappy <laughs> for um, at least a month in the refrigerator. Here's a short little clip of me surprising myself with a carrot that like, it made me laugh really hard during a video one time I snapped it and it scared me because it like snapped off. But anyways, we're going to do the same vinegar wash that we use for most items and it will be water in my bowl and it can be tap water for this, but water in your bowl and 5% distilled white vinegar, 5% will kill off the mold spores, E. coli, listeria, and any other harmful pathogens. Make sure it's 5% if you're here in the United States, not the 7%, which is used for cleaning your showers and your laundry. If you're in other countries, most of the time it will just say white vinegar and that is totally safe for your produce. Just here in the United States, don't use the 7%. Sometimes I will wash them and I will put them straight into my crisper drawer for the first week or two weeks um, after I bring them home from the grocery store. And then I will go to put them into glass containers. So. If I was lazy and did that, or sometimes my shoulder just hurts and I can't cut for a few days at a time. If I do that um, and I've left them in the crisper drawers too long and you can bend them in half because they got dehydrated, then you can put them in a bowl of filtered water like for a few hours or overnight and they will rehydrate and become crispy again. So if you have some carrots that are in your crisper drawer or celery, you can put it into a bowl of water and let them rehydrate again. They do not need to be stored in water. They don't have to stay for weeks in your refrigerator and water just for a couple hours, dry them out, and then you can put them in a glass container. For that, it is really important that you use filter water, well water, water from your fridge, whatever water you would normally drink and feed your family. So our house, we don't normally use the tap water because it tastes too much like chlorine. If you rehydrate your carrots with tap water that tastes like chlorine, then your carrots are going to end up tasting like the chlorine. So I make sure if I'm soaking anything for hours at a time that I am using filtered water for that. But when I'm just washing in that two minute wash, then I do use tap water. So for carrots and all other produce items, we have a blog post for salad basket kind of items that we will link below, but we also have the written instructions in our best-selling book called I Bought It Now What, which is available on thecrosslegacy.com and also on Amazon. So make sure you check that out. Okay, I noticed as I laid off these carrots real quick that there's one that kind of has a top that's kind of, they're just, the greens need to be cut off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that before I put them in the water. There's no reason to wash those greens. And then there's another one that has a little end that's a little bit funny. And I'm going to just cut those off real quick before I wash them. But for the most part, I don't trim the ends before I wash. And then I'm going to put them in the bowl. And there are some little broken ones in there too that I'm going to put in there. But if I want it to, if I didn't want them to look pretty for pictures, I could just cut them in half right now. <laughs> I'm gonna leave them whole. The other thing is, is as you're putting them in the bowl, if they're too big for the bowl and they're like sticking out, then I would just soak them for two minutes this way and then just flip them over again and soak them a little bit longer the other way. So we're gonna see if we can get all of these to fit in here. We should be able to. Okay, I'm gonna fill this up with water and then I'm going to put a quarter cup of distilled white vinegar in here and set the timer for two minutes. As much as you need to stand here for the two minutes when you're doing things like strawberries or blueberries and make sure that they're rotating on other sides because they come up to the top and you want to keep bobbing them down, for the most part, carrots will stay sunk into the water and so you don't have to do that. So you can just set the timer for two minutes and actually walk away from the bowl if you need to. And then I just wanted to say, I might show you the pot, but if I have like a 20 pound bag of carrots, I just do it in a larger stock pot and still do the 10 cups of water to a quarter cup of vinegar so 
like half a cup of vinegar is what I would end up using if I was trying to wash like 20 pounds of carrots at a time. So you can just add to the ratio. So you should see how nasty this water is. This is another reason why you won't see me very often using the same water for more than one produce item. This is a perfect example of I'm checking out how nasty this water is and it's helping me determine whether or not I'm going to rinse this item off afterwards in the sink before I lay them out to dry. So just by looking at the water, I know for sure I want to rinse these off. Sometimes things like peppers or lemons or avocados, different things like that, I don't need to rinse off again, but these for sure. Okay, since we're filming for YouTube today and we're trying to do this in a hurry, we're actually going to just dry these off with a towel. So I would never do that for berries. They need to air dry. But for carrots, I'm going to peel them in just a minute and to just dry them is okay. If I was going to be putting these in my crisper drawer, I would want to make sure they're 100% dry because I wouldn't want to add any moisture into my crisper drawer that would encourage mold. So make sure that if you are not going to peel them right away and put them into glass storage and you're going to put them in your crisper drawer you want them all the way dry. In your crisper drawer I just let them loose in there so they're just hanging out in the crisper drawer not in any bags not in anything they're just in my crisper drawer. I normally have a paper towel or a napkin down at the bottom of my crisper drawer. If you want to use the cloth, you can do that too. Okay, so the carrots are dry. I'm going to cut off the tops. I like to cut off the bottoms too. And since now they're clean carrots, I am going to peel these. And then I put the peels in a gallon size bag that I keep in my freezer. And I keep these for making stock. So we have a recipe for that that we will share. We actually have a pot of um, turkey stock going right now over here on the other counter because I always need stock around, so sometimes I can it and sometimes I just keep it in the freezer. But you need carrot peels and celery ends and different things, so make sure that you're saving your scraps for those and make sure they're clean scraps. I'm going to throw this into the freezer and the next time I make stock I will have veggie scraps all ready to go. Most of the time I will store carrots in these Pyrex snapware containers that have a plastic lid and no paper towel is needed for these, so I just put them right in the refrigerator and they are great to grab out for snacks. My Mike loves eating carrot sticks with ranch um, as a snack all the time, but it is easy to keep them in the stick size forms and I can just chop them up smaller if I need them. But I also store them in glass mason jars, but this is the way I mostly store them. Make sure that you also check out our other videos. Um, on storing other salad basket kind of items and how I store them in my refrigerator to have them last for weeks. Make sure to like and subscribe and share this with others and check out our blog on thecrosslegacy.com.